Hello, Ashley Rigdon here again. Um, just had a bit of a conversation in my Facebook group with a young lad who was recently signed into the Facebook group um, Ashley Rigdon's Cartoon Club. Um, and he's a very talented fellow and he's produced a couple of pictures. But what I've noticed today is that along with a lot of people um, involved in, in the world of art, um, when they are young and not as experienced as others, there tends to be a difficulty with perspective and very particularly the perspective of things that are around. And I have to say, it is, it's not the easiest of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do a demonstration to give an idea how you can get a kind of a better result uh, on round things in perspective. So let's have a go at that now. Okay, so we're looking at perspective today. Um, it's a little bit more advanced and, and forward from where I'd wanted to be at this point so far. But uh, having seen um, uh, one of the submissions by young Elijah, who's a member of my group, Ashley Rigdon's Cartoon Club, I could see that he's, he's got fantastic talent for uh, ob observing where to put lines, how to visualize things and put across a message but uh, in common with almost everybody um, he, he needs to learn a little about perspective so then I'll assume everybody needs to learn a little bit about perspective I know I had to at some point and you can see from the little picture I've done here I'm about to suggest to all of you that underdrawing is very very important it's quite straightforward when you've got the digital setup that I've got um, and if we go back a few years uh, to, to the point where people really didn't have this sort of thing you had to have a thing called a, a light box ideally that would that would do the job for you because what you do is in you, you take one sheet of paper you do a sketch on it you make loads of mistakes on it but you don't worry about it you're not attacking it all the time with a with an eraser and then when you've got pretty much what you want on your underdrawing you put another piece of paper over the top and almost trace it not slavishly it's not a tracing exercise it's it's to assist you in art now most people don't have a light box so what I've shown you in this little illustration here is that you can tape a piece of paper to a window assuming that you've got a window and some tape I can't do everything for you I hope you have got a window and some way of holding the paper on there now once you've done that uh, you you've got the light coming through and you can do your your little drawing like this as I'm showing you on here and you know the, I'm, I'm just doing a simple drawing and, and you can mess around with it. Oh, you want the arm up there? No, you don't. You want the arm down there? No, you want the hand on the hip or the hand in the pocket, whatever. But once you've got to that point, you can then, and I'll do this uh, using digital, but it, it should convey to you how this works. Um, you can now, if you put another piece of paper over the top, and tape that on you can now pick the lines that you like best on your drawing beneath in this fashion as I'm showing you here um, and you get a nice clean picture and all the mistakes that you would normally make are now gone they're completely hidden do you follow? If you don't follow, drop me a line in the messages and I'll see if I can come back to you with, with something uh, a little bit clearer. But basically all you're doing, and this is a technique used by some of the top people um, uh, in, in cartooning and illustration, all you're doing is making use of what's known as a light box effect. You're using light coming through one piece of paper, well actually coming through two pieces of paper, so that you can then do an effective drawing um, over the top. So now, further down the page, what I'm going to touch on is this subject of things that are round. Um, oh, wrong tool, we need the pencil. So, things that are round. Again, let's not get too slavish about it. But, there. 
it being round and and you let's say this is a pot and here here's its uh, thickness at the top and inside it's all a bit darker and down the bottom is the bottom of the pot so we, we're kind of looking right down the pot now how do we show that from a, a, a side on view keeping the the um, the shape and size well keeping the size correct but suddenly showing it as though we're not any longer looking down from the top but we're looking at it from a slightly sideways angle well I'm going to show you a bit of drafting here if you if you drop lines down the outside this is what you learn if you do technical drawing at school which I did do for a short while and what that does for you is it gives you the width the width doesn't change the pot doesn't get wider if you start looking at it from a different angle it doesn't get wider at all but it does flatten and this is how it flattens approximately approximately again you can work away at it until you're happy with what you've got because this is your underdrawing now I'm reasonably happy with that and then I can assume that the pot gets a bit smaller as it as it goes down because I can't see on the picture above I can't see whether it tapers or not but I'm going to assume it does taper and then we're going to have a curve at the bottom now key is this point here absolutely key it is not like that there are no sharp points on it take great care over this everything must remain curved even when it gets to the point where it's almost disappearing um, I'll give you an idea what I mean like that there are no points on that but we're now looking at the same thing uh, from an even more horizontal angle. I hope this is making it reasonably clear. It, it, the thing I'm trying to demonstrate here is that without using um, very clever software, the Procreate program would do this for you automatically. You wouldn't even have to give it a thought. But without using that, you can create guides for yourself to make sure that you get a better result on your uh, on your tubes and circles and things like that. Um, it is reasonably complicated and it does take practice. You need to get your eye in. But if you use the technique I've shown up above um, of the light box effect with the sunlight, there's the look. I'll put the sun up here just to show what it's all about. The light shines through the picture and your second piece of paper is where you do your finished drawing, not the first. The first one, well if you just take, look, there's the picture of me on the on the left, uh, my usual kind of whimsical depiction of myself um, and I've done it um, fairly roughly as I tend to do but if I want to using that light box effect imagine that I've done the picture of myself and it's pinned up on the on the window there I can then do this I'm not actually copying I'm just using parts of the, the image as a guide and this is more or less how it would look I'm, I'm reasonably content with it you know I mean and what I'll do just to uh, to make it even more obvious that we're using the effect of the sun is that we'll make these into sunglasses note the reflection on each one which I've decided upon right at the start there's the reflection or the you know the bit of light that you always see on dark glasses. I do this not to get clever, just to show you that the underdrawing 
is only a guide, only ever a guide, really, unless you're doing something that's, you know, botanical and that sort of thing. If you're drawing because something's in your mind and you want to make it come out and be alive, this is my recommended way of doing it. I dare say that you'll find other folk who would tell you something different, but this is my way. I'm content with it, and if you like it, well, do it. Make it work for you. And, and while I'm talking about this, please make sure that uh, you hit the like button below and subscribe, and that way you'll always get these. And, and you know, Elijah, for whom I'm doing this picture on this little film, um, is a subscriber and he can ask me things. He's also a member of the, um, uh, the club on, on Facebook, Ashley Rigdon's Cartoon Club. He can ask me things on there and I will do my level best to try and answer. We are not so numerous. If, if we suddenly get 100,000 members, then it may prove to be a little bit more complicated and I'll have to pick and choose. But right this minute is a good time to be involved because if you've got something to ask me, I can come back at you with a video showing you my answer to how you get round it. So uh, if you're drawing a pot, just remember when you're doing it from the side, it doesn't have any sharp edges like this, no sharp edges. Everything's very smooth and round. I won't say organic because a pot when it's done is not particularly organic, but you know what I mean. Um, and that's, that's my um, answer to the issue of round things being shown in perspective and a technique for making it easier which is the light box technique used in this case on a simple window with some tape thanks for watching um, i hope to see you again very soon bye bye now